Piracy is inevitable in the gaming industry. It's increasingly difficult to clamp down on, but some developers approach it as an opportunity rather than a problem, and it makes for very entertaining solutions. For the majority of law-abiding gamers, these creative solutions go unseen. So I'm here to show you seven of the most interesting anti-piracy measures. Michael Jackson, The Experience, was a game for the Nintendo DS. Released in November 2010, gameplay included rhythm-based controls to the beat of the King of Pop's greatest hits, and excluded the Sleepover Simulator. For some reason, Ubisoft anticipated pirates queuing up to illegally distribute the game, and so they made anti-piracy a priority. There's no better way to ruin a rhythm-based game than to make the audio unbearable. So for pirates, the King of Pop's music was heavily compressed. But developers still held their game in high regard. Expecting determination from the massive cult of people who are seemingly both MJ enthusiasts and video game pirates. So in theme with the 2010 FIFA World Cup, if the player persisted on playing, the audio would be swapped out with the repulsive sound of Vufus Whalers. Gmod, if you're not familiar, is a PC game where you're given the tools to create your own fun. A sandbox game that still, almost 20 years after its release, has an active community. If the game detects piracy, it will pretend to crash and display an error message, unable to shade polygon normals, which isn't a legitimate error. The supposed error message provided was followed by a string of numbers unique to each user. Players desperate to resume playing would post the error message on public forums, including their unique code. Meanwhile, the game's creator, Gary, is sipping his coffee and laughing at all the pirates outing themselves, using their unique string of numbers to identify them and subsequently banning their accounts. Please, please, do not push the button. You have no idea what it... The Witcher, a series of books turned games, turned Netflix series. The series follows Geralt of Rivia as he slays monsters for money. And when he's not slaying monsters, he's slaying, eh, uh, he's romancing his love interests. A great game with a price tag to match made for a big target for pirates. CD Projekt Red, the studio producing the games, traced and contacted these pirates to either pay for the game or face litigation. Pirate or not, players were unhappy that developers were tracking players' IP addresses, so the company stopped. Instead, they took a different, less effective, but much funnier approach. Developers concluded a big draw of the game was getting intimate with NPCs. So upon piracy detection, instead of beautiful women, Geralt will start making love with chubby old ladies. Not to body shame, but how disappointing. Even if that's your kind of thing, it's poorly done. Geralt's head clips right through their thick necks every time he's going for a kiss. Pleasured moans from a fat elderly woman with an expressionless face is enough to scar any unsuspecting gamer. Superheroes are the hot topic of the 21st century. Entertainment companies are cashing in hard on the intellectual properties of 20th century comics. None more iconic than Batman. And while DC films have been fairly hit or miss, the Batman Arkham games are award-winning and hailed as one of the best superhero game series of all time. The world building, storytelling, and gameplay are all so immersive that you really feel like you're Batman. You can grappling hook to scale up buildings and glide across the dark Gotham sky, unless you're a pirate, in which case, when you leap off that skyscraper, you drop out of the air like a rock. The developers at Rocksteady had an easy yet effective solution. If they detected piracy, the code simply turned off the glide feature, which is not only a massive game mechanic for immersing the player into the games, but there are points within the game that can't be surpassed without it. Reminding pirates that a bat with no wings is just a filthy rat. So what happens when a pirate is the one implementing anti-piracy measures? Are they more accepting? Or perhaps they embrace hypocrisy. Shapes and Beats is a rhythm game developed by Berserk Studio. 
a group of indie developers who admittedly pirated games in the past, but also pointed out piracy isn't always nefarious theft. It could be someone trialling a game before purchase, or even someone who can't afford luxury items outside of basic needs. While the game has piracy detection, it doesn't impede gameplay, crash the game, or even guilt trip the player. Instead, the video plays where the developer tells the player that they've detected piracy, and it's chill if they can't support the developer financially, but they should instead support by leaving a positive review. Big brain play. Piracy is inevitable, so why not use it as a call to action for promoting your game some more? Game Dev Tycoon is a game where the player attempts to run a game development studio. The developers decided to go a little meta with its punishing of pirates, going as far as uploading an altered version of their game to pirating sites. The altered version plays normally for a while, but eventually your company within the game will encounter a problem. Piracy. And it's not a fun game mechanic for added challenge. The piracy will inevitably destroy your business, and all the time and effort spent building your company will have been for nothing. The message doesn't come clearer than that. Piracy ripped support from developers that slaved away to entertain you. I don't know how effective it was as an anti-piracy measure, but it was incredible for marketing. The ironic trick quickly earned the game some fame for ingenuity, and as a way to ride the coattails of that fame, an update was released to include a mode where piracy could not only be encountered, it could be overcome. Rockstar have hit the jackpot with their Grand Theft Auto series. What started as a 2D top-down view that alluded to criminal behavior led to a multi-billion dollar open world online experience. With that rags to riches story, they were sure to encounter some pirates along the way. And in GTA 4, they cracked down hard. Instead of crashing the game, Rockstar wanted the pirates to suffer. Firstly, the player's character will always be drunk. The camera spins and zooms uncontrollably. Then, any vehicle you drive will have its health reduced to 10%. And once you're inside, you can't stop accelerating. It's only a matter of time before you hit an obstacle and go up in flames. Even if your motor doesn't combust on impact, the ever-accelerating car has no way of reversing, so whatever obstacle you hit will have to be your final destination. The developers were seemingly nice enough to let you repair your car. Simply drive your car forward into a garage without destroying it, and repair it. Then leave it there forever since you can't reverse it out. Let's say you're techy enough to disable those changes, or perhaps you're masochistic enough to play on regardless. Rockstar made a handful of the missions unplayable, locking necessary cars, disabling computers or phones, and removing objectives so they can't be completed. Dealing with piracy is easy once you're able to detect it. Simply set the game to crash so the player can't progress any further. So I love when developers take the time to consciously toy with those who steal from them, flexing their creativity just to frustrate players. Which one was your favourite? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching.